pastors, ministers, and future ministers. I'm Sehi, and this is Crystal, and we're so excited you're joining us today. Our podcast is designed to offer tangible leadership competencies that you can apply directly to your ministry context. Today in our Growth Together segment, we're going to talk about how to respond to hurtful comments. In our earlier episode on overcoming stereotypes, we talked about saying ouch to let the offender know that, you know what, that was kind of a little hurtful, um, maybe it wasn't necessary. Um, this is important because not everybody who makes hurtful comments are intentional. You know, they're not out there trying to hurt you. However, there are some comments that are intentionally hurtful, uh, it w- that are purposefully trying to bring you down and demoralize you and your call and ministry role. And so we want to talk about how do we respond in certain situations like that when you know in your heart you pray through this, you thought about it before respond too quickly, but you know in your heart and your spirit that this was meant to hurt you. Yes. So how do you do it? And this is the thing. It's not when you're going to hear these comments, uh, not if, it's when. Yes, it's so true. And since our last podcast on that topic, say he, I've used the word ouch actually quite a few times. Oh, that was good. a great hint and it really does kind of um, change the mode and the mood. But I do think it is a if not when type of, a when not if yeah. <laughs> type of a situation. Mm-hmm. And so I do think we have to recognize that it's if it hasn't come yet, for some of you young ones out there, there's probably going to be a time that something is intentionally said against you. And, and even because you are a female minister. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's good to look at those types of things. Now we have Beth Moore, who's our mentor and colleague that we appreciate so much as a female minister and we know that in the last few years she's had some fairly harsh things spoken out against her and um, that have not only hurt her but have hurt other women in ministry and so I love the way Beth Moore responds and I think we're I'm going to read her response to an actual recent episode in which things were spoken against her. And I think she can be almost a template for us to look toward on how can we walk through these difficult situations. So here it goes. Here's the beautiful thing about it. And I mean this with absolute respect. You don't have to let me serve you. That gets to be your choice. Whether or not I serve Jesus is not up to you. Whether I serve you certainly is. One way or the other, I esteem you as my sibling in Christ. Wow. So powerful. Yes. What a Christ-like response yes. to this difficult situation. I remember how that specific story stirred up some heated discussions on Facebook. And it's just so many different groups, which, by the way, Facebook or any social media platform could be the best or the worst (laughs) place uh, to showcase your level of spiritual maturity. So be careful (laughs) out there and be wise when you have to engage. And that's a whole other topic. We could probably do a podcast (laughs) on that, right? Yes. Um, But this gives us this framework and a good pointers for us to talk about um, regarding how we can respectfully and thoughtfully respond to hurtful comments. So here's number one. Stay on topic. Stay on the topic. Do not attack the person. Mm -hmm. It's both unnecessary and immature. Yes. Mm. If it's a matter of difference of opinions or theological convictions and not related to any salvation issue, Mm -hmm. then let it go and honor that person and just simply talk about it. But we have to remember that disagreement on these non-essential matters, the Mm -hmm. things that has nothing to do with salvation, Mm -hmm. um, we automatically assume that we can become enemies when we disagree, that we're going to be enemies, we're going to hate each other, and then somehow we demonize the offenders, and we have to be careful about those things. Yeah, I think that's so good. And I I think I like to look at our core values to help us. When you said first that we stay on topic and we honor as we're staying on topic, Mm -hmm. I think um, the second thing we're going to look at is that we defend our position biblically without getting defensive. And again, I think our core values can help with that. So our first one at the Network of Women Ministers is honor. And you already mentioned that. We honor our male colleagues 
And even if we disagree or if we believe that what they're doing is incorrect, we don't attack their character. Right. We honor them as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a people of honor. But secondly, we are authentic. And um, we we don't just shy back and, and, and basically become a punching board. I mean, it's mm-hmm. okay biblically to speak authentic truth. And I loved even as Beth Moore said, um, you know, whether I serve you is up to you, but whether I serve Jesus, that's up to him. Mm. And that was an authentic statement. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Mm. What you're saying is not going to impact how I am walking forward with a call of Christ on my life and heart. Yes. And so kind of that that piece that we're saying, yes, we're going to walk through. I also love if I could read for you a statement that my good friend, Dr. Jamie Morgan, who's mm-hmm. a lead pastor in Pennsylvania, when she was also um, kind of positioned with some of these hurtful comments, mm-hmm. she she wrote it this way using the biblical theological side. Mm-hmm. She said that when the enemy uses someone to devaluate either gender, it is an attempt to diminish the power of the cross and dilute the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Both genders are made in the image of God. Is It is God who places and empowers women in position of biblical leadership. So she didn't come out against a person, That's but right. she did mm-hmm. speak the biblical truth. This is what the Bible says on this issue, and this is what I stand on. So Jamie Morgan, thank you for being honoring, and thank you for being authentic. And then the third core value is forgiveness. And so when things are spoken against us, what do we do? That's a biblical principle. Yeah. We forgive so that we are not working out of woundedness. Mm-hmm. And then we walk forward with hope. And all of yes. these things are biblical principles. They are our network of women ministers' core value, and they will help us live authentically and powerfully, in, even during these hurtful times. That's right. And let's remember not to react to the situation. We respond. But when we respond, we don't do that emotionally we do this very spiritually yeah. uh, and and here's the thing when we respond to situations like this too too quickly mm-hmm. with a lot of emotions and passion is good yes. but it could be misinterpreted and when we do that as women leaders female leaders in ministries mm-hmm. it could hurt our next leaders, yes. our next generation, next yeah. Crystal, next Sehi, next you. So we have to keep those people in mind. That, am I being a bridge builder? Am I paving the right way for the next person? Or am I burning the bridge? So always keep that in mind and walk that fine line, yes. Yes. championing each other. Yes. So here's another tip. Publicly model grace and privately bring the matter to guide. You know who called you, so you don't have to fight for yourself. You don't have to defend yourself or try to prove it. And believe me, I have tried to prove myself, and it was tiring. Mm-hmm. And you could be spending that time to just work for the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so stop doing that. And yet sometimes you may feel angry and feel defeated. And I know that, and that's truth. Um, but don't pay too much attention. Don't give the devil too much credit to those hurtful comments. Um, but let God fight for you. Let him stand for you. Let him comfort you. In the meantime, though, continue to model Christ likeness because here's the thing. Someone is watching you. Someone that is behind you, someone who, who, who are serving next to you, they're watching us. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure that we are the bridge builder, not the bridge burners. It's so true. And I think about some of the colleagues and, and mentors in my life, the Dr. Beth Grant, mm-hmm. and Dr. Carolyn Taylor, and Dr. Debbie Gill, um, my mom, Rhonda Johnson. Yes. I mean, these women that have modeled this, I've looked toward them, and I'm thankful they haven't built bridges for me by their grace-filled words. And I want to be that for the next generation. And I think that what they have modeled is having grace-filled words. But when they do speak out, you can tell that they're speaking out from spending time with Jesus. And so as you Mm. mentioned, take it to the Lord. And then there will be times that we have to speak out. I was recently at an event that the Lord called me to speak out about an injustice that women in ministry were facing. And I got on the stage and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I spoke out. And so I do think it's in the season. We take these things to the Lord. We don't act out of emotion. And people can see the difference when we are acting out of emotion mm. based on anger than 
so the justice based out of God speaking to us and anointing us on a matter. Mm-hmm. So I've I've walked on both sides, yeah. and I know I know what it feels like to walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to walk toward making change in a grace filled way. Let's be the generation that can do that. Honor those who have showed us the way, and honor the next generation who is looking for a path to take. That's good. The fourth one is we choose to love the offender and serve Jesus. And again, looking toward the statement that I read from Beth Moore, she forgave the offender openly. Dr. Jamie Morgan, also who wrote an article about um, offense, she at the end said, I forgive my brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. And she also did something really great too. She said, hey, I want to ask forgiveness on his behalf for some of the things he said um, to the the women that were hurt by some of the statements. And so um, this kind of a Christ-like attitude can go a long ways. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we have to model that at every level. Absolutely. And as female ministers, there will be a time when you feel like, man, is this the time and place to speak up? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be perceived as, oh, that lady, right? Mm -hmm. That (laughs) crazy lady. And so, but you have to remember when you're sitting at the leadership table, uh, don't second guess yourself. You're there because God has called you there. You're equipped and called. You, there's something about you uh, that you bring value to the mm-hmm. conversation. So oftentimes I find myself when I'm sitting on the board with a bunch of quality leaders yes. and I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, I don't belong here. And that is the devil attacking. In fact, yes. you know, if I didn't belong here, God would have never yes. placed there in the first place. So you you get there. Um, sometimes hurtful comments may be said, but sometimes it's a great healthy conversation. Mm-hmm. And then and you you have to judge God, is this a is this the right time to speak up? And when I do that, how can I represent you well? Yes. Right. Yes. Build We're each loving other each out. other and loving Christ in the yeah. process. Yes. Oh, okay. So here is the time that we need to answer some awesome question. <laughs> and this is pretty good and relevant to our conversation mm-hmm. today. How do we respond to a controversial discussion online? Now, it's one thing to have a, a discussion in person, but it, online, a lot of people just hide behind their screen and, and just mm-hmm. kind of this attacking mode, and it can be very, very unhealthy. A good mentor of mine uh, advised me uh, after the fact that I made a mistake <laughs> and said, you know what, whenever there is a controversial discussion, just disengage. Don't get into the conversation because what it does is it just provokes anger and hatred and and disagreements even more. It's not going anywhere unless it is done in the right way. And hardly online discussions around the difficult topics are done well, unfortunately. (laughs) Or my mentor also suggested if it's an important matter and they both of you are passionate about, then meet in person and talk about it. When I was kind of getting engaging in the Facebook conversation, I thought I was standing up for my fellow ministers. In fact, I used to not do it. And then I started to think like, you know what, I need to represent. I need to speak up. And that's what got me to say, you know, I want to be part of this conversation. Otherwise, they won't know this view exists. Mm -hmm. However, the better way would have been just talking in person, and, and which we ended up doing uh, later on. It was much, much better yes. because you get to hear them out and not just uh, post one post at a mm-hmm. time, but it's a real conversation. You hash things out. You The misunderstanding is gone. Yes. Yeah. I found that too, and I found that most times that there has been a misunderstanding or, or a place where I feel that women in ministry have been slighted or disrespected in some way, that if I can have an honest conversation, we may not end up agreeing, but yeah. we'll probably end up still liking each other. And on Facebook, sometimes we disagree and don't like each other or so any social media platform. <laughs> yeah. So the disagreement part's going to happen, but the liking each other part, I think in person, we can walk away. We have had some relationship moment. And so another thing that I pay attention to on social media is whether it's a closed or open group. Mm. If it's a closed group with just a few friends that you know everybody relationally, I yeah. think you can be more honest and you can talk about real issues and how you're together going to maybe solve some problems. So those closed group can be better for that type of dialogue. But I also think about it specifically when 
when it's a open dialogue that um, you know lots of people can see is I really pay attention to timing and I use the concept of when my son played high school football it was a known rule that when your son was on the field that when it was a game day whether it was that morning or when he was on the field that you didn't go to the coach with a problem mm. because he needed to have his mind in the game he needed to be going forward and probably your problem was like the least of his worries at that yeah. time so you kind of knew as a parent unless your kids like bleeding or dying you leave the coach alone on game day well as ministers we know our game days they're Sundays they're when we're leading conferences or retreats or we're out in the field ministering to people and so I think because Facebook we can't be sensitive to game day we can often bring issues like coaching issues into play in a time that will be very hard for our brother or sister in the middle of the game to receive and so maybe Maybe they get on, they see something, somebody else tells them, hey, there people do not like how you're coaching out there <laughs> yeah. and um, you're not bringing the right people into the game and you need to think about who you're bringing into the game because it seems to us like you're only bringing certain people on into the game and our son's not in there, mm -hmm. okay, or our person isn't in there. And sometimes these conversations can hit right during the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. And so social media, we don't have any control of that. Yeah. And so I do believe as I respected my son's coaching and my son coaches that we also can respect our colleagues and social media sometimes it's hard to do that because it comes at sometimes inopportune times yeah. and when we do it personally it can always be done better and um, more intimately <laughs> yeah yeah I think the timing is really really important in fact the quote that you read about Beth Moore mm -hmm. she responded after a few days after the actual incident took place, that mm -hmm. tells me that she took time to pray about it, yes. processed it, and just now responding in a God honor yes. way, which she did. Yes. It's such a Christ-like example. Mm. And so, yeah, timing is perfect. Uh, if the matter is important to you and we're really, really passionate about, I think person to person, yes. uh, the conversation is amazing. Yes, That's the and best I, way. I've had very few people that even if I have had an issue that are unwilling to meet with me. Mm -hmm. So that's good news. Maybe you've had a different scenario, but that's been a blessing to me that people have been willing to meet and talk through difficult topics. Yeah, it tells you that they care about you. They do. And you care about them. I do. Yeah. Well, today we talked about how to respond to hurtful comments. But if you're not really sure whether or not this comment that had been said to you was actually intentional comment, intentionally hurtful comments, we did another episode on overcoming stereotypes. That was, that's episode two. So I would encourage you to go back and listen to it and get some great insight that you can help. It, it might help you decipher, is this person intentionally being rude to me and trying to tear me down or is it just a misunderstanding that we can just talk about it and go go over this and become stronger together so there is that resource to you well i i'm so excited that you joined us today can't wait to come back next time but be sure to stay on uh, facebook and stay connected on social media on instagram and until every woman fulfills her ministry call just remember we're in this together, together.